This is Welsh Rabbit, or at least this is what Welsh Rabbit was like in 1747. But why is this cheese on toast dish called Welsh Rabbit? Or is it Welsh Rarebit? Hey there, cheese historians! I'm Julia, and this is Cheese History, a channel where we talk about the history of cheese and all its weird and wonderfulness. A while back, I did an episode on a cheese on toast recipe from the 1930s. I got several comments comparing it to Welsh Rarebit. So now it's time for an episode on Welsh Rarebit. Or is it Welsh Rabbit? Hmm. Okay, so let's start with the name. Which of these, Rabbit or Rarebit, is the original, and which is the corruption? First, a word on how to say Rarebit. It's either said like it's spelt, rare bit, or as I've always been told, like rabbit. By and large, it doesn't seem to matter much, although I'm sure some people will have strong opinions on the matter, and feel free to leave those in the comments below. But make sure you're civil about it. The one occasion where it is important is when making a video on Welsh rarebit, which involves talking about which of the two terms, rabbit or rare bits, is the original. Because I tend to say rabbit regardless of how it's spelt, to distinguish between the two, I'm going to continue to pronounce rarebit as it's spelt, rare bit, and rabbit like rabbit. I'm not trying to wind anybody up, but if I don't distinguish them, somehow nothing I say from here on out is going to make any sense. Of course, with my accent, it might not anyway, and if you find this to be the case, please use the subtitles where I'll make sure I get it spelt right. Now, back to which name is original. I googled both terms and got over a million hits for Welsh Rarebit, while the top hit for Welsh Rabbit was a recipe for Welsh Rarebit, which I thought was hilarious. I had to go halfway down the page to get Welsh Rabbit. So the consensus according to Google favours Welsh Rarebit being the correct term for this type of cheese on toast. But Welsh Rabbit has the oldest surviving reference, appearing in the 1725 journal of English poet John Byram, from the entry for Sunday, April 4th, where he mentions that at the King's Arms he ate a meal of Welsh Rabbit and stewed cheese. This isn't an isolated instance either. Byram mentions eating Welsh Rabbit four more times across his journals, paired with a scallop shell, veal, and cold salmon and cheesecakes. So there was definitely some sort of food described as Welsh Rabbit that was around in 1725, but Byram gives us no hints about what that is. You could make the case that this cheese dish that Byram is eating is actually Rabbit here, but I don't think it is. You see, Byram regularly notes what he eats in his journal, and doesn't describe other meats by where they came from, suggesting that this dish is not simply rabbit meat. In fact, he also eats rabbit on other occasions, which isn't described as Welsh rabbit. And he mentions toasted cheese each time alongside bread, suggesting that the cheese itself was toasted. So we can say that there was a dish called Welsh rabbit in 1725, but not what that dish was. We don't have any mention of Welsh rarebit until 1781 in the Morning Herald and Daily Advertiser newspaper, at least according to the Oxford English Dictionary. I haven't been able to track down a digital copy of that newspaper, so I haven't been able to verify what it says or if it describes what this dish was, which is very annoying because I like to verify these sorts of things whenever possible. But on this occasion, I'm just going to have to assume that the OED knows what it's talking about. So if the first mention of Welsh Rarebit is in 1781, then it seems to me that Welsh Rabbit is the original name, and Welsh Rarebit is either the corruption or a variation. I realise I've made it a good chunk into this video without actually talking about what Welsh Rabbit actually is. So let's turn to that question. The best way to get an idea of what Welsh Rabbit is, is to find an earlier recipe for it. And the earliest I could find is from Hannah Glass's The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy, published in 1747, which isn't too long after the earliest reference to Welsh rabbit. Interestingly, she doesn't just have a recipe for Welsh rabbit, but also for Scotch rabbit and two recipes for English rabbit. The Welsh rabbit recipe is pretty simple. Toast bread on both sides, toast a piece of cheese on one side, then put it on the toasted bread and use a hot iron to brown the other side of the cheese. There is also the option to rub mustard on the top as well. Because this recipe was pretty simple, I figured I'd give it a go. I used a locally made cheddar cheese to recreate this recipe, and I'll explain why cheddar cheese a bit later on. I also opted to use a chef's torch to toast both the bread and the cheese, because I don't have an open fire to toast them over, and the recipe does suggest only being able to toast one side at a time. I'll admit that the torch wasn't the best substitute for a fire, because it tended to char the toast rather than toast it, but it did give a nice toasty flavour. The cheese basically melted and didn't crisp up, so I made the call to put it on the toasted side of the bread when it was melted about a third the way through, just in case it got a little bit too soft to move. Once on the toast, the cheese melted really nicely. It didn't get very brown though, 
but a hot iron might have done that better. I put mustard on one half of it to see if it would make any difference. How did it taste, you ask? Like melted cheddar on toast. The side with mustard tasted like melted cheese and mustard on toast. Pretty simple, really. All right, back to Hannah Glass's recipes. The recipe for Scotch rabbit is almost the same as that for Welsh rabbit, except the bread is buttered and the cheese toasted on both sides before being put on the bread. But the recipes for English rabbit involve wine and much more complicated cooking methods than just toasting over a fire. So if we take Hannah Glass's recipes as a representation of the standard way Welsh rabbit was made, then it's a pretty straightforward way of making cheese on toast, with the option of adding mustard. Any of you who are familiar with Welsh rabbit today will have noticed that this is a far cry from the modern version of the dish. It is, but how it's changed is a story for another video. Because I want to look a little closer at a similar Welsh dish to see if we can learn anything more about how the Welsh like to eat their cheese on toast. Because the Welsh have a baked cheese dish that predates the term Welsh rabbit by several hundred years at least, which had a Welsh name, Caws Pobby. Welsh rabbit may well have originated from Caws Pobby or been the English name for the same dish. The earliest surviving reference to Caws Pobby that I could find is from 1526 in The Hundred Merry Tales. The 78th story is set in heaven with Saint Peter guarding the gates to God's kingdom. Many Welsh people have made it into heaven, but their constant talking was disturbing the other inhabitants. So God asked Peter to find a way to get them out. Peter knows just how to solve this problem. He goes outside heaven's gates and shouts, Caws Pobby! or roasted cheese, and all the Welsh come tearing out of heaven in search for their beloved roasted cheese. Peter quickly ducks back inside and locks the door. Another reference is in Andrew Board's The First Book of the Introduction of Knowledge, written in the 1540s. He starts his chapter on Wales with a poem about a Welshman, which includes the line, I do love Caws Borby, good roasted cheese. These two 16th century mentions of Caws Borby suggest that it's a precursor to the Welsh rabbit we see in Hannah Glass's recipe. But the only recipes for Caws Borby that I've managed to find come well after the earliest Welsh rabbit recipes. In 1867, Augusta Hall, Baroness Lanover, published the first principles of good cookery. And the last recipe in the book is for Welsh toasted cheese. It's given in English and Welsh, with the Welsh name being Caws Wedi i Borby. The recipe is similar to Hannah Glass's recipes for Welsh and Scotch rabbit, with a slice of cheese being toasted and served on toasted, sometimes buttered bread. So Caws Borby sounds like it's pretty close to some forms of Welsh rabbit, further supporting the idea that it could be the Welsh name for Welsh rabbit. So why is it even called Welsh rabbit? It seems like a strange name for what is effectively cheese on toast, a meal that has nothing to do with rabbits. One of the typical answers to this question is that Welsh rabbit got its name because the Welsh were forbidden from hunting rabbits by their English landlords. So instead, they ate cheese on toast and called it rabbit. However, this doesn't account for the fact that there were rabbit dishes of cheese on toast in many other counties in southern and western England as well. So calling cheese on toast rabbit wasn't a uniquely Welsh thing. It was also common for Welsh to be used to imply something that was a poor imitation of the real thing, such as a Welsh comb, which is basically running your fingers through your hair. So Welsh rabbit could well be a similar insult, implying that cheese on toast was the poor person's substitute for rabbit. This explanation could also explain why rabbit became spelled rarebit, because it was less derogatory and tried to avoid confusion with an actual rabbit, you know, the small, fluffy, poppy kind. Although, if this was the case, as rabbit and rarebit sound pretty similar, I'm not sure how successful that really was. It could also be that the Welsh version of this dish, however it got its name, was the poor person's version, and that something like English rabbit was fancier, especially if Hannah Glass's recipe for English rabbit is anything to go by, because it includes wine. The truth is that we don't really know for certain why Welsh rabbit is called Welsh rabbit, but we do have many theories. If you've come across other explanations for why Welsh rabbit is called Welsh rabbit, feel free to share them in the comments. Now, as this is a channel about the history of cheese, it would be remiss of me not to ask the question, what sort of cheese would have been used to make Welsh rabbit? Hall's description called for Welsh cheese made from sheep and cow's milk. Unfortunately, there isn't a huge amount of information about early Welsh cheeses, other than kerfili, which is made from cow's milk. So I haven't been able to find anything so far about traditional sheep and cow's milk cheeses from Wales. Bobby Freeman mentions that the Welsh were keen to trade for hard cheddar cheese because they liked it for roasting as cow's borby. 
If they couldn't get cheddar, then they would use locally made cheese made from sheep or cow's milk. This agrees with Hall's recipe for cow's bobby. So as you saw earlier in the video, when I decided to recreate Hannah Glass's recipe for Welsh rabbit, I used a locally made cheddar. I haven't been able to find a hard cheese made of sheep and cow's milk that would make a good substitute for the traditional Welsh cheese in this recipe, so I decided to use cheddar instead as an easily accessible substitute. But most of the earliest recipes I've found for Welsh rabbit don't specify anything about the cheese. Perhaps to their readers, the choice of cheese was obvious, or they could choose whatever cheese they liked. At the very least, based on Hannah Glass and Augusta Hall's recipes, the cheese used had to be able to withstand being toasted on one side, or both sides, before being put on toast, suggesting it wasn't something that melted easily, or it could easily be cut thick enough without crumbling to withstand turning into a pool of melted cheese. So we don't have much to go on about the cheese, other than it was sometimes cheddar, or a Welsh sheep and cow's milk cheese. But today, Welsh rabbit is so much more than just toasted cheese on toasted bread. That's going to be the topic for a separate video, so don't forget to subscribe to Cheese History so you don't miss out on that one. A special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon for supporting the channel, and thank you for watching! And I'll see you next time for more Cheese History.